So last night I was working and I got an email and the last thing I did before I stopped working was responded to a student's question about how do you play chords with a melody on top. She was talking about how do you strum some simple chords while having a melody on top. And I figured a really good example of this was uh, the song What a Friend We Have in Jesus because I play it with my wife a lot and I do like an instrumental intro. And um, you heard at the beginning of this. So how in the world do you think about strumming chord shapes and then put a melody on top? And I just wanted to give you this as an example. It's pretty easy as far as this goes, but if you can start thinking like this, then you can take pretty much any song you want and uh, start putting, mel putting melody on top of the chords that you're strumming along with. So it's in, in the key of A. And you're gonna see how chord tones play a big part in melody because most of the, uh, the melody notes on top are just already in the chord and I just have to kind of manipulate my fingers and move them around to catch other notes that are in the melody too. So, what a friend. A friend is this F sharp right here with my pinky. That first melody note was the open E. Then back to the open E. And then the B string that's being fretted right there. And I'm lucky here because the next melody note is just the G note that I'm fretting, the chord tone. It's an A note right there, so. And then you move to a D chord. So you have to think about the melody and switch to the chord at the same time. Lucky again. The highest note here I'm leaving as the B string right here because I want it to stick out. I try to keep the melody note as the highest note just so it sticks out like that. And then the next melody note is down here on the fourth fret of the um, D string right here. And it gets kind of weird, weird because that's a low note. So I kind of sometimes hit the fifth and the bottom, the A, and then that note, melody note on the D string, and then the G string as well, just to kind of fill it up a little bit. Then it goes back to an A chord. The highest note, all our sins and griefs to bear, is this note you have in the chord on the D string. So I just hit those two notes like a power chord. And then the next note, oh, 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 is just the A note right there on the G string. And then the next note is again getting lucky the note you're fretting already. There you go, that's C sharp. All our strings, and back to the G string. And then you hit a whole open A chord to get that high E string, and grooves to, then the B string. And then you go to an E chord, just a regular E chord, and the melody note there is on the B string, which is great, it works out. So, so far you have, So hit that high E string on that one, you don't want to do that, you want to make sure. Try to keep the highest note you're playing, the melody note, that B string right there. Then go back to the A. Same little phrase as you did on the first A, a chord, then you go to the D. See how that note is the highest note? Just hit the D and G strings because your melody note is right there on the G string. Same thing, fourth fret with your pinky. And then you go back to the A, but this time the melody knows. So you have your D string. So I'm just hitting the root, the A and the D. And then the next note is the G string. And then you move to an E chord. And this is a really good example of how sometimes you have to manipulate what fingers you're using or add extra notes to the chord. So. I'm just grabbing this melody out, second fret of the B string, and then the open B string, and then kind of the same thing, I have a, what would be an E sus4, then let it off, and back to an A. That's a really good example of how you can take a simple chord progression that you know for a song you're just playing rhythm to and put a melody on top. Now, this isn't the easiest thing in the world to do, especially when you're first starting out. You have to kind of get used to making some chords different ways and get creative about actually thinking about what key you're playing in and what shapes you're playing in, because some chord shapes lend themselves to making it easier to play melodies in certain keys. That's why I picked A for this key. It was relatively easy. If I was playing it in G or something like that, it would have been a little bit tougher. But 
one really good trick is if you have this and you need it in a different key, so for example, if somebody pl you're playing with needs it in B, all you would have to do is play the exact same thing, capo two, now you're playing it in B, right? So pick a song that you like, that you love, that you can already play the rhythm to, and start trying to see if you can put the melody on top like that while keeping your rhythm going, and then, um, if it's not feasible in whatever key, whatever shapes you're playing, maybe try with a capo using different chord shapes. So let me know in the comments below what song would you like to be able to do this with. I'll see you later.